if Christ were alive today in Beit Lahem, he would need a permit to go to the church in Jerusalem. That's according to Mundar Ishaq, the pastor of the Christian Evangelical Lutheran Church in Beit Lahem. I'm sure you know that Palestine has Arab Christians. But did you know that a single Muslim family is the guardian of the oldest and most sacred church in the world? I want to talk about how this family helped preserve and protect Christianity in Palestine and in the entire Middle East. Let me begin my story now, so we can learn just a little bit more about the people of Palestine. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the Resurrection, or al qiyamah in Arabic, was established in 333 AD by the Roman Emperor Constantine. After his mother, Queen Helena, marked the place of Golgotha during her visit in 326 AD. The Church is considered the oldest church in Christianity, and most Christians believe that it is the location of the rock where Jesus was crucified on in the Holy Land. Mujir al-Din al-Hanbali, a judge and a great Arabic historian, described the church as the third gem in Jerusalem, after Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock. The church was given this name in relation to the resurrection of Christ from death on the third day, according to Christian doctrine. Every year, millions of Christians pilgrim from all around the world to visit this holy church. Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, who was believed by many to be a generous and liberal ruler, did not wish to bar the Holy Land to Christian pilgrims, despite the years of struggle with the Crusaders, and in a display of tolerance, offered a safe and free passage through the Holy Land to all genuine pilgrims. Although Salah al-Din was tolerant, he was not a fool. He realized that crusader soldiers might conceal themselves among the thousands of pilgrims who poured into the Holy Land each Easter and took certain measures to ensure his safety. First, he proclaimed the feast day to be celebrated just about Easter time. The Muslim faithful who flocked to the Holy City to the new feast provided a nice numerical balance to the Christians. Second, Salah al-Din ordered the key to the church to be retained by the Hashimite noble family, Jud al husseini al Ghudayya. According to the Jerusalemite historian Dr. Arif al-Arif in his book, The Detailed History of Jerusalem, the Juda al husseini family was entrusted with the keys of the Holy Church since the 12th century under Salah al-Din in 1187. Our family has been carrying the keys to the Holy Church since the era of Salah al-Din. We have been doing this in accordance with the hundreds of pharaohs or royal decrees issued by the successive sultans who ruled Jerusalem, affirmed Adib Jawad Jud al husseini currently the deputy governor of the sultan or Qa'im Maqam, and the current custodian of the keys to the holy church. The custody of the keys are still in the hands of the Hashimid Jud al husseini family, al Ghudayya, until these days, inherited from father to son, and nobody is allowed this honored job other than this Hashemite noble family. The Judas are still dwelling in the Holy Land of Jerusalem. All Christian denominations are in agreement to keep the honored job with this Muslim family. Mr. Adib Jawad al husseini the current custodian of the keys of the Holy Church, says that the great leader Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, and in order to protect the church from any ruler who comes after him and thinks of ruining the church, decided to hand its keys to an influential family who can protect the church from any harm in the future and can take a decision in protecting the church. So he decided to delegate this honorable job to the Judah al husseini family. Mr. Judah added that the Israeli authorities tried opening other gates to the church in an attempt to cancel our honorable job, but the Muslim Christian unity repelled these attempts. Mr. Judah adds, we are proud to be the custodians of the keys, and we are keen on guarding and maintaining the Holy Church. The history of the Christians and Muslims in Jerusalem is filled with many examples of brotherhood and respect for all religions. The key is long and curiously shaped, and the doorkeepers and priests use this key at dawn to open the church, 
where each of the major Christian sects receives the key for one day during the Holy Week of Easter. On Holy Thursday, the key is held by the head of the Franciscan Monastery. On Good Friday, the key is held by the chief dragoman of the Greek Orthodox Monastery. On Holy Fire Saturday, it is held by the Armenian Orthodox Church, when the custodian of the key has to stamp the Holy Grave before the Holy Fire comes out, announcing the beginning of Easter celebrations. Other sects may use the church, of course, but only these three may hold the key. In addition to this job, the Judah family held many other honorable jobs in Jerusalem. You can always look them up if you're curious. As a Muslim, an Arab, and a Palestinian, I want to stress the fact that Jesus, son of Mary, is very dear to us, since he was a prophet from God, and that Arab tribes believed in him and his message from the beginning. The Arab Christian tribes were separated tribes at that time, not a unified ethnic group. However, Herodotus, a Greek historian and geographer, referred to them, saying that there were many Arabs of different tribes living in Palestine, mainly in Jerusalem and the southern regions. He was referring to the Semitic Arab tribes of Amorites, Canaanites, Nabatchians, and others, who had entered the land from Arabia in migratory waves since the ancient times. Some even believe that it was the son of Noah himself, Canaan, that first arrived in the land of Palestine, or at least his descendants. But other scholars deny this, as they claim that he drowned in the Great Flood. Palestinian Christians are often called the living stones of Christianity, as they can trace their history to the birth of the church in this land 2,000 years ago. Ancestors of some families have been in the Holy Land ever since, while others migrated there in later centuries. Therefore, they should be understood to be the indigenous people of the Holy Land, not immigrants and not recent converts. In fact, they are the oldest Christian population on earth. Unfortunately, many Christians all around the world do not even know that there are Christians in Palestine and view the Palestinian-Israeli conflict as a religious conflict between Muslims and Jews rather than the struggle over land it truly is. Yet Christians around the world owe much to these indigenous believers and their faithful stewardship of the holiest sites of Christianity. Once a major portion of the population in this region, today Palestinian Christians make up about 2% or less of the Palestinian population in the occupied territories. While they may comprise as much as 10% of the Palestinian population worldwide, the majority are members of the Orthodox Church, second most are Roman Catholics, and then Angelican, Lutheran, and other denominations. They enjoy a respected place in Palestinian society and a status in government, culture, and business that belies their tiny percentage of the population. These Christians strongly identify as Palestinians with the same culture and history as their Muslim sisters and brothers. In this land, Christians and Muslims have lived together peacefully for many generations. Today, they suffer together under the occupation and all that it entails. Checkpoints, travel restrictions, confiscation of land, destruction of homes, abuse of children, beatings, killings, imprisonment, and more. One of the most painful restrictions of the occupation are the limits on their freedom of worship. Tourists from around the world can visit the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, believed to be the site of Christ's burial tomb. Yet, Palestinian Christians who live only a few miles away, cannot reach it without a special permit that they can rarely obtain, even during the Easter season. According to Mundar Ishaq, the pastor of the Christian Evangelical Lutheran Church in Beit Lahem, if Christ were alive today in Beit Lahem, he would need a permit to go to the church in Jerusalem. For decades, Palestinian Christians have been struggling non-violently for their freedom. In the landmark Kairos Palestine document, which has been signed by thousands of Palestinian Christians and endorsed by all the heads and patriarchs of the Jerusalem churches, these Christians have issued a powerful call for justice 
that will lead to real peace. As Desmond Tutu wrote to them on the occasion of launching of Kairos Palestine in Beit Lahab, December of 2009, we are reminded by Holy Scripture that when one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. You are in my prayers as you launch this very special document. It is filled with grace when it could have been filled with anger. It is filled with profound and prophetic words. And our God, who neither slumbers nor sleeps, will hear you cry and will be your Emmanuel. In that grace-filled landmark document, the Palestinian Christian's message to fellow believers is this. The word of God is the word of love for all his creation. God is not the ally of one against another, nor the opponent of one in the face of the other. God is the Lord of all and loves all, demanding justice from all and issuing to all of us the same commandments. Palestinian Christians are keenly aware of their dwindling presence in the land where Christianity began and are appalled by the brand of Christian theology that supports Zionist claims to their ancestral home. This threatens their existence and ignores their suffering and their rights as human beings and children of God. Although Christianity in Palestine seems that it's heading towards extinction, those that have remained in the Holy Land are steadfast in their faith and in their hope which lies in God. For those of you who didn't know, you can find Arab Christian communities indigenous to the land all around the Middle East. You can find them in Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Iraq, Egypt, Algeria, Bahrain, Kuwait, and more. It's interesting to know how Christianity in these countries and in countries all around the world started from one single place, and that place is Palestine. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. If you like this video, stay tuned for my next one where I talk about the Arab Jews. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. For the hardcore fans, you can check out my Patreon link in the description box below. Until next time, love you all.